हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न बीटा ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ अ फैटी एसिड्स वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दिस बीटा ऑक्सीडेशन इनटू द फोर इजी स्टेप्स द फर्स्ट वन इज नोन एज द प्रिपरेटरी स्टेप्स ऑफ द बीटा ऑक्सीडेशन द सेकंड वन दैट इज द मेन स्टेप्स ऑफ द बीटा ऑक्सीडेशन द थर्ड पार्ट दैर इज एनर्जी कैलकुलेशन ऑफ बीटा ऑक्सीडेशन and the clinical biochemistry of beta oxidation so why it is known as the beta oxidation so into the fatty acid as we all know at the end of the fatty acid there is a carboxyl group and just carboxyl near to the carboxyl group the carbon is known as the alpha carbon then beta then gamma that's on in this beta oxidation the main oxidation process occurs onto this carbon that's why it is known as the beta oxidation if the oxidation process is occurs onto the alpha carbon then it is known as the alpha oxidation but into the human body mainly the fatty acids are oxidized at this carbon so into the preparatory steps where the preparatory steps occurs so preparatory steps occurs into the cytosol what helps into this preparative steps so in this step the fatty acids require coenzyme a what this coenzyme is made up of so this coenzyme is mainly made up of b complexes but in the b complexes it is made up of the pentothenic acid so how these fatty acids are activated so these fatty acids bind with the coenzyme a but how they bind does they require energy then the answer is yes they require the energy but how much amount of the energy it requires so they require two phosphate bond energies so does they require two atps no the answer is no they require only one atp but then how will they get the two phosphates so one from the one atp it is converted into the amp means adenosine triphosphate to adenosine monophosphates and they releases the two phosphates and that's how they are converted into the fatty acyl coenzyme a so activation steps occur into the cytosol and it require two phosphate bond energy and it will be converted into the fatty acyl coenzyme a now what are the further steps occurs the further steps will be occurring into the mitochondria that means this fatty acyl coenzyme a they needs to reach inside the mitochondria but how they will reach they will does they go to directly directly they can transport it then the answer is uh, no they are not directly transported what they require they require here the support of two things one thing is the carnitine and the other thing the other thing is the transported protein what is the name of the transporting protein that protein is known as translocase it's an enzyme or you can say it's a protein will transport that is known as the translocase so how they will transfer so let's understand this is a cytosol and here is the mitochondrial membrane and inside the mitochondria as we know this fatty acid first of all it is converted into the fatty acyl coenzyme a now this fatty acyl coenzyme a will what it will do it will bind with what so it will this fatty acyl coenzyme a you can see here it will a binding with this carnitine where it is binding it is binding with the carnitine 
and it will what it will form again it will a coenzyme a will be released and it will form the acyl carnitin and this acyl carnitin with the help of the translocase protein it will reach inside the mitochondria in the form of the acyl carnitin but now remember the role of the carnitin just like a auto rickshaw it will take this passenger reach inside leave the passenger that means from this acyl carnitin carnitin will be released and this carnitin will again come out into the cytosol and again bind with the another fatty acyl coenzyme and take that inside the mitochondria and inside the mitochondria did acyl bind with the another coenzyme a and it will form acyl coenzyme a and the carnitin is released that's how the carnitin goes out and the role of the carnitin is finished now our main substance is inside the mitochondria now what are the main steps which occur inside the mitochondria so inside the mitochondria you just remember four easy steps first is d the second h d and t now what will occur now our fatty acid is into the form of the acyl coenzyme a you can also name it as a fatty acyl coenzyme a the first step is a dehydrogenase dehydro two hydrogens are released how so just write here the compound in the form of a ch2 ch2 and co and coenzyme a so we know that uh, this is uh, our uh, you can say uh, alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon so from the alpha carbon one hydrogen is released from the beta carbon one hydrogen is released who will take this hydrogen and this hydrogen will be cast up by the fad and fad will be converted into the fadh2 and as this fad has to go into the oxidative phosphorylation it will be forming the 1.5 atps fine so as we know that one hydrogen released from the beta and the one from the alpha then what will occur then they will form the double bond here and this is the coenzyme a then what will be the name of this compound as the bond is between the alpha and the beta carbon so we can just name it as as a alpha beta unsaturated fatty acid so first step is completed now the another second step h that step is known as the hydratase hydratase in the hydratase step what is added the h2o is added as to how it is added as to into the oh and h this oh will bind with the beta and this h will bind with the alpha then what it will form we can just form here there is a further chain so there is a chain here and here there is oh then another having the h and we have then coenzyme a then what will be the name as onto the beta carbon there is a hydroxyl group the name can be beta hydroxy and the further name is same that is the fatty acyl coenzyme a so second step is completed now the third step dhdt that is again it is a dehydrogenase and the enzyme name is also dehydrogenase if you want to name the complete name you can just name it as a beta hydroxy fatty acyl coenzyme a dehydrogenase and now the hydrogen will be released one from this beta 
and the one from this alpha and what it will form it will form C and H and uh, here O and C H and coenzyme A so as you can see this H is not here it is here so uh, it has formed one uh, you can say the double bond between the oxygen and this is known as the keto group so what will be the name the keto group is onto the beta carbon so it will be named as the beta keto fatty acyl coenzyme a so that's how but these hydrogens are released where who will take this hydrogen here the hydrogens will be taken up by the nad plus and nad plus will be converted into the nadh plus h plus as this nadh goes into the oxidative phosphorylation it will give us a 2.5 atps so that's how three steps completed dehydrogenase hydratase dehydrogenase and now the breakdown step which is uh, taken up by the enzyme known as the thiolase what this thiolase will do this thiolase will add another coenzyme a and it will break down from the beta carbon so that this two carbon group which is uh, known as the acetyl coenzyme a and the remaining main chain which is having a further the carbons that will form the co binding with the coenzyme A and it will named as a fatty acyl coenzyme A. So now these two carbons are removed and this acetyl coenzyme A will go into the TCA cycle. And if it go into the TCA cycle, one acetyl coenzyme again form the 10 ATPs. Now the main thing, the main thing, again revise fast D H D T. That means if we have the fatty acyl coenzyme A, the first step dehydrogenase it will release one hydrogen from alpha one from the beta taken up by FADS2 and be converted into the alpha beta unsaturated fatty acid then the second step is a hydratase and it will form a beta hydroxy fatty acyl coenzyme A then it will form again beta keto fatty acyl coenzyme A and Finally, this thiolase enzyme will come and it will break down and it will break down the acetyl coenzyme A. So that means if we have the 16 carbon at the end of this process, we have two carbon and another 14 carbons. And as these 14 carbons, again, they will go from these all four steps and what it will give us then again it will give us a 12 plus 2 carbon then again it will go into dhdt step 4 step that's how 8 then 6 then 4 then lastly into the last step it will release the 2 acetyl coenzyme a that means if we have the 16 carbon chain the process will be repeated how many times so into the first 14 second third fourth fifth sixth and the seven times the seven time this process is going to be repeated now let's calculate the energy produced from the 16 carbon chain so as the 16 carbon chain the process will be occur for the seven times as we have seen it seven times means how you can just remember if the 18 carbons then are divided by two minus one time the chain is going to be repeated then means it will be repeated for the eight times that's all 16 carbon divided by two minus one now into the seven time how many atps will be released but 16 carbon it will form the n8 acetyl coenzyme a 
an 8 acetyl coenzyme goes into the TCA cycle it will give us around 80 ATPs fine as the cycle is repeated for the 7 times and into the 7 time at every step DHDT in the 2 dehydrogenase steps uh, one we will produce the FADH2 and the another is produce the NADH FADH gives 1.5 ATP there's 2.5 means one times we get another 4 ATPs as it is repeated for 7 times it will give us a 28 more ATPs so 80 plus 28 ATPs that means we will get 108 ATPs. Wow, we get 108 ATPs from just 16 carbon fatty acids. But wait, 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 wait. At the activation process, as you know, at the activation process here, from the fatty acid to the fatty acyl coenzyme, we require two phosphate bond energies. As we require two phosphate bond energies, we will minus these two phosphate and that's how we will net get the 106 ATPs. From the 16 carbon fatty acids. And now, the regulatory steps, which is the main regulatory steps, then remember that uh, I just forget to tell you this carnitile here it is binded by the cat1 enzyme and here uh, there is a cat2 that means a carnitine acyl transfer is 1 and carnitine acyl transfer is 2 this cytosol carnitine this is the main uh, regulatory step remember now the clinical aspects as uh, in sometimes the carnitine is deficient into our body and when the carnitine is uh, deficient, when the carnitine is uh, deficient, and then we will, uh, our body will not produce the beta oxidation because the fatty acyl coenzyme will not be transported inside the mitochondria. That means fatty acid will not be used for the energy protection production, and then what will be used more? Glucose will be used more for the energy production, and our body will go into the hypoglycemia we will have a multiple episodes of hypoglycemia in carnitine deficiency fine and the another thing deficiency of the translocase what was the translocase that was the protein which was transporting acetyl carnitine inside then what will be occur then as we have a less energy we also produce we develop muscle cramps and uh, uh, or even muscle cramps and less energy level into our body carnitine deficiency is common mainly into the pre-infants remember this yeah so that's all about uh, our today's beta oxidation and uh, i hope you all enjoyed and kindly give me the feedback into the comment section